Welcome to another episode of What Does That Do? Today we're going to take a look at one of the basic functions used across all web programming languages, Base64 encoding and decoding. Whether you know PHP, JavaScript, VBScript, Perl, or Python, Base64 encoding is the easiest way to transmit or store data in a consistent character set, regardless of the characters in the original content. And, if you've watched any of my videos, you've probably heard me say, I know this text is X, or something along those lines. This video intends to explain why and how that's able to be done. The text that, you've see, that you see here is Base64 encoded, but what exactly does it actually do? Well, Base64 encoding takes the vast array of different characters in all sorts of different character sets and converts them into the set of letters uppercase A through Z, lowercase a through z, the numbers 0 through 9, and the plus and slash symbols. The symbols are dependent on the implementation of Base64 being used, but the most common by far is the encoding used in the MIME standard. Very simply, the conversion is performed by taking the binary representation of the input string, splitting it into 6-bit groups rather than the normal 8 for ASCII or UTF character sets, and then converting those back into numbers to look up into an array. 6 bits results in 64 possible values, which is where the name base64 comes from. If the binary string is not evenly divisible by 6, the remaining bits are padded on the right to generate the last character, and then an equal sign is used to pad out the remaining one or two characters to make an evenly divisible string. As a result, every three input characters result in four base64 characters. Even a single input character results in two base64 characters, followed by two equal signs. To know what characters are generated when encoding, we perform a simple lookup of the value into the table of base64 characters. In programming terms, this is just an array indexed at zero that starts with uppercase A through Z, followed by lowercase A through Z, then the numbers zero through nine, plus, and finally, slash. Let's take a look at this in action. If we encode the single letter A, we see that we get eight individual bits, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. If we split this into six characters, the first six are 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, but then we have two bits left over. And these need to be padded out to a full six bits, so we add four zeros to the end. This gives us 24 and 16 as the values, which turn into Y and Q in the lookup. And the result is YQ equals equals. If we take this and turn it around, we get back these 12 characters, and because we've run into equal signs, we skip over them. Taking this, we get the first eight characters turning into 97, which is the lowercase a. As I said before, every three characters get turned into four base64 characters. As a result, while any given string of base64 can decode to a number of different original texts out of context, within the context of a base64 string, a group of characters will always decode to the same original text if they are positioned on one of those boundaries. For example, let's take the letter capital A. It decodes to 16, or it decodes to two instances of 16, which is QQ, but now, what happens if we put a B in front of it? By putting the B in front of it, now all of a sudden, the QQ turns into YKE. And if we put another B in front of it, we get YMJB. But what happens when we put a third B in front? Then, we end up with 
YMJI and our QQ turns up again. And we can see this repeating by adding another B, which gives us YKE again. But notice the beginning four characters have stayed the same in these last two runs. This means that we know anytime you see capital Y, lowercase m, capital J, lowercase i, at the beginning of a string, it's three Bs. If we see three Bs on the boundary of three characters, we will see the same string over again. Once again, we see here y m j i this leads to some very interesting things that allow you to say i know what that base 64 string is just by looking at it for example this is http colon slash if we decode it we see the bits getting written out here and then lo and behold we get HTTP colon. One of the more common places you can see this is when you are when you are assigning values to a variable and you see something along the lines of dollar foo equals base64 decode and then this followed by a whole bunch of other characters. You then know right off the bat that dollar foo here is going to be a URL. Some other common functions that you that you might run across include MD5, which is B capital W capital Q number one, or possibly ORD if you're looking for the ordinal number of a character. This is always going to be B3 capital J lowercase k. Or, if you're converting a number back into a character, you might see car as capital Y to lowercase h, lowercase y. The same goes for things like the str in sterlen. Here we have c3rybgvu. If we're looking at strev, we'll see the exact same four characters C3, RY, CM, V2, and the same for strot13. This makes it very easy to see encoded function names in Base64 text without having to fully decode it which might speed up things when you're trying to decode an unknown text. Let's take a look at an unknown text here. If we take a look at Q index here, we see base64 decode DQOKZMLS. Well, if we take a look at what DQO decodes to, we see that it decodes to 1310. Now, we don't see anything output because 13 is a carriage return and 10 is a line feed. So, right here, we know that this text starts off with a carriage return and line feed. If we take a look at this, and just echo it out, we see that indeed the very first thing that happens is it echoes out carriage return and line feed. So now you know how Base64 encoding and decoding works. Hopefully, this will help you in your investigations to spot strings of functions that you are interested in before you have to decode them. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you found it interesting or helpful. Press subscribe if you want to be notified when a new video goes live. And leave a comment if you have a question or feedback. See you next time.